Alrighty, folks, you guys really enjoyed the video that I did on South Park's predictive moment. We have more of them. We're going to go through some of the best South Park predictions. And they're pretty good. Ah, oh, this one's a personal favorite. Here we go. Al Gore in Man, Man Bear Pig. Hello. It's uh, getting late, boys. Why don't you get in the car and I'll drive you all home? Okay, Mr. Marsh. Be safe. Hello? Hello, this is Al Gore. Oh, man. Hi, Mr. Gore. I was the vice president. I know. Can you and your friends make it to an emergency man bear pig meeting tomorrow morning? I have some evidence he could be in this area. Uh, look, I'm sorry, but we're all kind of busy. Oh, I get it. You don't believe me either. No, no, it's not that. Yes, it is. Nobody believes me. I'm trying to warn everybody and nobody takes me cereal. <laughs> uh, one of the great episodes of South Park of all time. You have to be super cereal about Man Bear Pig. I'm super cereal. So the Man Bear Pig joke for people who have not seen the full episode is that Al Gore shows up in South Park declaring that global warming is going to cause the invasion of Man Bear Pig, a creature who is half man, half bear, and half pig. And uh, it is all an attempt at attention. This is when An Inconvenient Truth came out, which is that movie where he claimed that all the polar bears would be dead already. It's 2023. The polar bears are actually doing quite well. And so uh, South Park was making fun of the fact that the dude cannot get off the world stage and is taking private jets to warn people about Man Bear Pig. It is my honor to present the Courageous Teacher Award to Herbert Garrison. Down, bear 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 down, down, down. Get along, little slave. Oh, my God. That's what our boys were talking about? He is so courageous. <laughs> Say, Mr. Slave. Yes, Mr. Garrison? I had a dream last night that you were a real dick. Really? Why would you dream that I was being an asshole? No, no. I was the asshole. Oh, that is so courageous. What an amazing human being. Yeah, that is, that is definitely where we are in our society. The, the more perverse you are, the braver you are is how, is how this now works. This is why Drag Queen Story Hour for the Children. This episode was 2002, by the way. So about 20 years too soon on this one. Welcome to Tolerance Camp. You are here because you would not accept people's differences. Because you refuse to accept the life choices of your fellow man. Well, those days are now over. Here you will work every hour of every day until you submit to being tolerant of everybody. Here in Tolerance will not be tolerated. We just call this Twitter exile now. There's no actual tolerance camp, but you are forced to, to go to sort of the, the Maoist struggle sessions, right? You have, to, you have to declare your sins. You have to demonstrate to all the world that you now understand that the ways of the social left are the only way. It's satire, but kind of not. Mr. Garrison has this new assistant and we're really uncomfortable around them. Children, a lot of times, the reason people get uncomfortable around gay people is that they have some issues themselves. Well, I guess it's mostly the way Mr. Garrison stuck a gerbil at Mr. Slave's ass. Right. And you see, children, that's why you need to... Whoa! What? Are we homophobes now? We don't want to be gay bashers, chef. Children, there's a big difference between gay people and Mr. Garrison. Do you understand that? No. You children just take your lunches. I'm going to have a talk with the principal. I'll take three lunches today, please. You don't need three lunches, Eric. You're fat enough as it is. It is my life choice, Chef, and if you don't tolerate it, I'll report you to the SEC. <laughs> yep. yep. Yeah, tolerance swings all the way back around. We cannot change the South Park flag, Mayor. Mayor, as I've said before, I find that flag to be racist and insensitive. Chef, I respect you very much, but you have to understand that this has been the South Park flag since some of our ancestors, like my great-grandfather, founded this land. That flag represents a time when blacks were persecuted by whites. How can a black man not be bothered by it? All right, Chef, I'll have my assistants hold up the flag, and you tell me what exactly you find racist about it. You don't see anything wrong with that flag? Chef, what about the baseball team, the Cleveland Indians, huh? Should they change their name because it's racist? Yeah. No, because it's their history. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that flag is racist, but uh, predicting that the Cleveland Indians would have to change their name back in 2000, yeah, uh, that happened. Remember, they changed their name to the Cleveland Guardians, which um is not great. It's not a very good name for a baseball team, the Guardians. We're, We're not, not Detroit! Detroit. All right, this is 2001 episode from South Park, season five. Okay, children, who can tell me what a...
Uh, not sure what's happening here. Oh, oh. Disconnected my ExpressVPN. Okay, well, that'll do it. That's why I use ExpressVPN. Your ISP does every single website you visit. They sell that information to ad companies and tech giants who use it to target you and cut you off from the information you actually want. ExpressVPN puts a stop to that by creating a secure encrypted tunnel between your device and the internet so your online activity can't be seen by anybody. I use ExpressVPN on all my devices, phones, laptops, even Wi-Fi routers. ExpressVPN is as easy as closing that bathroom door. You just fire up the app, you click one button, and you're suddenly protected. It's no wonder ExpressVPN is the world's number one rated VPN by Mashable, The Verge, and countless others. If, like me, you believe your online activity is nobody's business but your own. Get the VPN I trust at expressvpn.com slash benyt. Use my exclusive link expresses vpn.com slash benyt. Get an extra three months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash benyt and protect yourself the smart way today. Okay, children, who can tell me what a condom is? Yes, Jenny. It flies around and it's endangered. That's a condor, Jenny. Condor. Condoms are what we use to stop the spread of STDs. Yes, Fillmore. Can we do finger paints? No, we can't do finger paints. You kids want to get herpes, huh? How about a nice bucket of AIDS? Sound good? Now pay attention, all right? I'm going to show you the proper way to put on a condom. First of all, you remove the condom from its package. Then you find which way the condom rolls out. Put it in your mouth and apply. <laughs> Uh, can you see the direct line between this and uh, Drag Queen Story Hour for the Kitties? We must teach all kindergarten children that they are gender fluid. And it's also to protect them. It's, it's to protect, protect them, you see. see. It's always to protect the children that we have to pervert them and destroy their lives. And that, that's why. That's why. We can't just let them be innocent. We have to protect them from the possibility of STDs when they're in kindergarten. And that goes directly to, we have to make them choose their own gender when they're four. It's really important. Uh, some things never change. Sex isn't something that should be taught in textbooks and diagrams. Sex is emotional and spiritual. It needs to be taught by family. I know it can be hard, parents, but if you leave it up to the schools to teach sex to kids, you don't know who they're learning it from. It could be someone who doesn't know, someone who has a bad opinion of it, or even a complete pervert. What? Why did you pan to me just now? What the hell is that supposed to mean? Now, oh, chef. Jeff is a wise man. This episode is from 1997, an episode titled Mr. Hanky, The Christmas Pooh. It's like Shakespeare. And now, South Park Elementary presents the happy, non-offensive, non-denominational Christmas play with music and lyrics by New York minimalist composer Philip Glass. As I turn and look into the sun, the rays burn my eyes. What the hell is this? This is horrible! This is the most god-awful piece of crap I've ever seen! Hey, you're the ones who made it this way! Fact check true. So first of all, love the rip on Philip Glass. That's hysterical. So... <laughs> He's a classical composer who really gets all this praise, but this is the kind of stuff that, that, he, that he does. This minimalist composing, it's... Ugh. And I do. I, I love it. I love that they've. You have to remove all the joys that nobody's offended, and what you end up with is just nihilistic, dark garbage. Life is pain. Life is only pain. Alrighty. Well, we've recapped some more South Park for you. Again, Matt Stone, Trey Parker. They're very funny dudes. Yeah.